Hello all, welcome back to the predictive analytics regression and classification course. In lecture 13, in this video, we are going to talk about the effect of feature engineering in logistic regression. He, here we are trying, we will try to understand how we can conduct feature engineering in logistic regression. So typical logistic regression model will have a data set uh, D. So typical it will have a, if you think from a sort of Excel or data frame kind of thing, you have a Y where Y is a like one zeros or something like that. And then you have a bunch of features X1 to XP. So these are your features and you have N such rows one two three up to n rows and you have so that means you have about n cross p x columns and bunch of vectors of y zero ones so that is what i have written so the ith row you have one y i and x i transpose so the i so now once you have that then z i equal to x i transpose beta and once you compute zi, then you put e to the power zi divided by 1 plus e to the power zi. This is sometimes in statistics we call it logit link. In statistics we call it logit link. In ML we call it sigmoid, sigmoid function why we call it sigmoid function we will know but we'll know that why um, but i personally feel logit function is much more appropriate name because sigmoid function uh, there are other functional form which also follow like a sigmoid function so sigmoid function because this behaves like this it's kind of elongated s this particular function but there are other than this function, there are functions like probit also behaves like elongated fun function. So probit link can be called sigmoid functions, but in ML, particularly logit link is being called as sigmoid function, which is not necessarily a unique thing. So I prefer to call it logit link. Uh, and then once you define pi1 and pi0 is effectively 1 minus pi1 and then for pi1 you observe 1 y i value as 1 with probability pi equal to 1 and 0 with probability pi 0 or 1 minus pi1. Um, so here beta this should be beta uh, beta is p cross 1. So okay now this is a mathematical representation this is mathematical mathematical representation representation of logistic logistic regression Now the same logistic regression I'm going to represent as a in a graphical point of view. Now we have x1, let me use a different color. So this is x1, this is x2 dot 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 xp. So we have x1, x2, xp and then each of their weight, these arrows represents their weight and if I multiply them with their weight, so beta naught, this is 1, this is intercept, this is intercept, so beta naught plus beta 1, x1 plus dot dot dot, beta p, xp. Let's call it Z. 
and then we are putting it into a sigmoid function z is e to the power z by 1 plus e to the power z that is my p i'm getting p and then with some probability i'm getting observing 1 i'm observing 0 so that's my graphical representation of the model okay so now we will try to understand the sigmoid curve behavior of the logistic regression so logistic regression does not have behave like simple linear regression instead it behaves like a sigmoid curve so what we will try to do we will try to visualize the nature of the sigmoid curve using some following a simulation study okay so we consider predictor variable x between minus pi and pi so x is a variable which takes value x ranges value between minus pi and pi so now what i'm going to do i'm going to define z where z is 0 0.01 plus 0 0.45 times x plus e where e is some random number generated from normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 0 0.3 now we define our response variable y equal to 1 if z is strictly greater than 0 and y equal to 0 if z is strictly less than 0 okay now ask yourself pause the video for five minutes ask yourself is this model a logit model or probit model i hope you tried it and you got the answer so it is actually a probit model because you see e here it follows normal distribution with mean 0 standard deviation 0 0.3 okay so that means it follows logistic regression with probit link okay so it is logist probit model okay so not logit it is a probit model now we pretend that actual response variable z is unobserved this is very important in your real life we will never see ob observe z so this is my data generation process so i am just simulated some random numbers between from uniform minus pi to pi then using this model i generated z and given z i generated y now i will just pretend that i have only y and x and i will delete all the z values okay so now we will pretend as if we never observed z we never observed z values the only data that we have is x and y in d as some data frame right so we will just define some data dot frame x comma y as d okay so we model the relationship between x and y now using logistic regression so we will use glm function in the stats package of r so if you do that turns out that these purple colors point these are actual observed y for different values of x these are actual observed values and this red color that you are seeing this red color curve 
this is actually your estimated p or probability y equal to 1 okay so you can see that this behave this p behaves like a elongated s that's why it's called sigmoid curve so the non monotonic relationship uh, with logistic regular the elongated s type behavior also known as sigmoid curve is well understood in the literature if you want to know more about the detail about it then you can see the chapter 4 of introduction to statistical learning by james wetton tipshirani and hesti okay i will recommend this everybody to read this chapter this is a beautifully written chapter However, elongated S only models the monotonic relationship between X and Y. Here we discuss how we can model the non-monotonic relation between X and Y using logistic regression. So the, we can model the non-monotonic relationship. Now why before going into the how to non-monotonic, so I hope you understood why I am calling it monotonic relationship because as x increases so what is the relationship between x and z the relationship between x and z we are considering is straight line right and what is the relationship between z and p z and p has an elongated s and that what we are seeing in x and p so if you put that that is this put this putting it into some sort of a you know elongated curve but it is continuously monotonic function it is not a non-monotonic function it never been like going up and then coming down it is always increasing constantly it is increasing it is bounded between 0 and 1 because it is probability but it is continuously increasing it is a monotonic function now the relationship between x and p not necessarily has to be monotonic it can be in real data it can be going up and then make them down so the elongated curve in the monotonic relationship so if you just use a simple linear regression, uh, logistic regression, it will only model the monotonic relationship between x and y. So now we will discuss how can we model the non-monotonic relationship between x and y. We can do it by using higher order polynomial. How? So previously what we were doing, we were using beta equal to e to the power say beta naught plus beta 1 x divided by 1 plus e to the power beta naught plus beta 1 x now what i am suggesting why you stop here you add the higher order polynomial here i have added quadratic you can add cubic or polynomial of order 4 5 whatever you want you can put it there in the equation 1 quadratic equation is being presented to model relationship between x and z we can use higher order polynomial model to capture the underlying relationship between x and z so the non monotonic relationship with logistic regression let us try to capture this behavior let us assume that relationship between x and z are sinusoidal so we consider the predictor variable between x of x between minus pi and pi so we simulate the latent variable z as z equal to sin x plus error so error is still following normal so 0 with standard deviation 0 0.5 but the relationship between z and x is for sure not linear it's a sinusoidal so how it is that's how the relationship between z and x the latent space has a very non-linear relationship 
now if you when from z we simulate the y's and we plot that's how it looks like that's how it looked like so initial we had some values here then we got a bunch of values here and then we got lots of values here so because now it is either all values of z is being converted into y as either 0 or 1 that's all and in real life we don't know what is the 0 no, z values so all we have is the values of y which is either 0 or 1 so we pretend that we do not know the true relationship between x and z okay and we simply fit a logistic regression of simple logit p beta naught plus beta 1 x that is p equal to e to the power beta naught plus beta 1 x plus 1 plus e to the power beta naught plus beta 1 x okay now if you fit that this is this is fitting a simple non monotonic elongated s curve fine monotonic relationship it's giving you monotonic relationship but though we know we have quite a few points here in, and the, the underlying relationship is very non linear so we thought like we see simple logistic regression models non linear but non monotonic relationship between p and x even if between x and z has a non monotonic behavior like you know quadrat cubic behavior sort of sinusoidal behavior so we fit a cubic relationship between x and z uh, x and p x and p okay and we decided to go for this beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta 3 x cube and Hence, the final model is this logit p equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta. So, final model is logit p equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta 3 x cube. And when we fit that model, the p is now nicely non monotonic and capturing the sinusoidal behavior between x and y so we never used z here remember that all we have is only x and y just modeling the higher order feature we put couple of higher order feature x square and x cube and the model logistic regression able to model the sinusoidal behavior of relationship between x and y so this is so about to show that we can use feature engineering technique to capture the non linear and non monotonic relationship between x and p or y the feature engineering typically helps increasing out of the sample model accuracy however we should be careful about the overfitting because when you put more and more features in your model so naturally you have a chance that you end up overfitting the model okay so thank you very much see you in the next video